Amen. Church, say amen. amen. Truly. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Truly, we're grateful to be here. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God for. Amen. For seeing us through to be able to get here today. Maybe a little tight. I re recorded last night a live CD. Amen. And you know, in the recording section, amen, and they make you sing, sing, sing till you get it right. One of them kind. Hmm. And we're thankful also to the pastor, Pastor Johnny Flakes. Amen. One of my, I feel like, sons, whom I had the privilege to work with in his early beginning. Amen. And I tested him to see how serious he was about preaching. I brought the drunk folks in on Saturday morning. And that's what he had to preach at. Amen. But every Saturday morning, he would be down there sweating just like Sunday morning. So I saw that, amen, the calling was real. And I am so proud of him, Sister Jones and myself, for the work that he has done. And amen. And allowed God to use him. Amen. And I want him to know it's an honor for me to come and to say something about Dr. Johnny Flakes Jr. Because that's where my training came from. Amen. When I first started preaching, he was already president of the Congress of Christian Education for the state of Georgia. Plus, he was already working with the National. And I went in in a hurry, and he reminded me, young preacher, wait your turn. Amen. And I was blessed with some awesome training from and working on his team and working with him. And we was blessed. Amen. We had Christian Education Awareness when we first started in First Korean. I said, well, Dr. Johnny Flakes need to be the first somebody to come and speak to us. And he came on a fifth Sunday morning and spoke to First Korean about Christian education. So I'm just grateful to be here. Amen. And I thank God for safe travel. And to have the lady with me, riding with me, my riding partner, <laughs> Sister Jones, for 48 years. Yeah. Amen. So thank her for her support as far as my ministry is concerned. And then Reverend Benjamin Jenkins was my chauffeur to make sure I get here on time. And to all of these preachers, thank you so much. Always good to see, amen, associate ministers supporting the pastor. Amen. And after 40 years of pastoring myself, Amen. I know what it means to have some good, amen, supporting 
associate ministers. I'm talking about the kind who don't want to pastor. Why are you pastor? Amen. See, I think in every church we do have some Aram. When it comes to associate ministers. Amen. Moses was gone a lot. Amen. He had a lot of speaking engagements. Amen. Not knowing that Aaron wanted to pass it so bad. Praise the Lord. And finally, he was two or three of the irritated members around the church convinced Aaron. Moses stay gone too long, too much. We need us another pastor. Amen. And Moses was up there spending some time with God, he and Joshua. And the Lord said to Moses, speak to Joshua and tell him, there's a noise down there on 4th Street. And it's not a holy noise. Amen. And Joshua stepped over to the side and looked down the mountain. And Aaron had got the congregation together and was making them a God. Praise the Lord. So we always going to deal with that around the church. And this is a great church. I've been knowing this church for a long time. And it's great what you're doing. Amen. And honoring. And after 32 years in First Corinth, I gave up my church to come back home to support my pastor. I did one of those Johnny Flakes things. My pastor got where he could not function. And he said to me, he said, son, the Lord told me to tell you to come home. I had just had an anniversary. And you know how that go. I said, the Lord told you to tell me. He said, he said, he said yeah. I said, the Lord ain't said nothing to me. <laughs> he told me, he told me to tell you. And I didn't know that was the beginning of a new journey for me after passing a good church. And he kept reminding me. And it was the Lord who moved and said to me as I stood there and preached for a whole month, everybody shouting but me. And I couldn't figure that I had started not able to feel anything. I said, what they shout? How they shouting? And I'm up here flunking. And the Lord was trying to tell me, your tenure here is over. And finally, when I did what the Lord said do, I dreaded to go to First Corinthians. I kind of grew up in First Corinthians. I knew who was there. And all them folks wasn't friendly. When I was singing in the choir, you know, I knew who was there. Say amen, somebody. I saw two ladies had just finished Urshan. And we came downstairs, and I heard one of them say, I will cut your... Th and they just finished urshing. One of them just got through shouting. <laughs> and they was in this room when I walked by. I said, my God. But I grew up in that church. So did Sister Joan. We got married in that church 48 years ago. So I... I said, no, Lord, I'm not going back to First Corinth. You can send me down in the country to a church and got but two members. 
not First Corinth. <laughs> I told Reverend Ragland, I said, you know, you, 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 them folk, he said, you worry about the wrong thing. He said, you need to do what the Lord tells you. I said, the Lord ain't told me nothing yet. He said, well, he keep telling me to tell you. <laughs> and I did. And I came home, and it's been a joy to come back home and pastor my home church. I said to this young lady, God has given you a great responsibility, but it's good to have all of this help around you. And you need to let them help you. I know Robin is beautiful. And she is so precious. But she's not too precious to be disciplined. If her hand needs to be spanked, I don't care what the schoolhouse say. You better tap that hand. I just remind my son, I say, you, I say, you know, you're trying to raise this one, this one. Uh, the book is all right. But grandmama now. <laughs> and granddad in there. Yeah, some of y'all looking at me funny, but it's all right to say it like that. <laughs> that pot liquor. You might not agree like mine talking about organic. <laughs> I said, you better get that boy some green liquor. <laughs> and they call themselves, well, keep the children out from our house because they know sure enough, you know, we like collard green with season in it. <laughs> Real cornbread. I'm not talking about that jiffy stuff. And I said, here you all talking about something organic. Look at you. <laughs> Amen. I said, look at both of you all. Amen. I said, I remember you eating fat back. Strickling. You ate what we cooked around the house. It wasn't no organic at the house. I said, it was organic, all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, look how you all turn out. Don't raise the children different. Amen. So let them help you. You've done the right thing to bring her and present her back to the Lord. Amen. And Because you're going to need the Lord's help in times that we're living in. And lastly, good to see Mama. Mama looks so good. I tell you the truth, she was on the trail with us, and you all need to come on. Y'all can do better than that. Give up. This the lady who stood by her husband for over 50 some years here at this church. Come on, y'all. Amen. And you all just keep on helping her and keep on taking care of her and keep on keeping her looking good. And First Lady, God bless you. Amen. Don't want to omit you. Thank you for taking care of this young man. Amen. And being and doing what you are doing to support his ministry. Now, there is a word. I did come. I did come to say something because... I'm just grateful, amen, that you all are doing what you are doing. To it. That's remembering Dr. Flake. As I said, talking about Reverend Ragland here after 32 years in First Corinthians, every now and then, they get up there and say, give an honor to God, who is the head of my life, Reverend Ragland, after 32 years. I do not get mad. 
And I am able to get up there and say, give an honor to God, who is the head of my life, Jimmy Swagger. <laughs> I would have to stand up and say something. But to say Reverend Raglan, they still call me Reverend Raglan. That's all right, praise the Lord, because as long as I'm there, Reverend Raglan will still be alive because I am standing on the shoulders of him who, amen, worked and built First Corinthians what it is. In the book of Mark, you will follow me for a few minutes, and it's, I think this is a good piece. Jesus, in this 14th chapter, and let's look at the fourth verse. We say, and there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why wasn't this waste of the ointment made? Or it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She has done a great work on me. For you have the poor with you always. And whenever you will, you may do good, do them good. But me, you have not always. The eighth verse says, she has done what she could do. She's come aforehand to anoint my body to the burial. The ninth verse says, verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she has done shall be spoken for, spoken of for a memorial of her. I thought from those verses to share with you a thought from those verses. Only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for Christ will last. Here it is, the feast of the Passover. One of Israel's three great yearly festivals. The other two was Pentecost and Tabernacle. Commemorating their deliverance from Egypt on the night when God passed over the homes of the Israelites during the slaughter of the firstborn of the Egyptian. It was celebrated on the 14th of Nisan. April, March through April, and was followed immediately by the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which continued, amen, from the 15th to the 21st. You can find this recorded in the book of Exodus, amen, the 12th chapter. In the field of ministry, praise the Lord, there's always trouble. Is that right? Now, now if you all talk to me, I'll go and get out your way. If y'all say amen and help me get up, you know, I'm kind of used to coming down myself. Is that all right? So, so it's just help me get up a little bit. It says, in the field of ministry, there's always trouble. And many times it comes from the people. Amen. And though it does not matter whether you are doing a good deed uh, with good intention. And this includes preachers, 
pastors, deacons, and members. And we must be reminded that we must be about our Father's business. Is that right? When Jesus was missing for three days, amen, when he was 12 years old, and the Bible said he was sitting in the temple reasoning with the lawyers and the doctors. He was astonishing them. When Mary and Joseph found him, they asked him, Mary asked him, why have you, amen, done, why did you do what you did? And Jesus' words to Mary said was, woman, didn't you know that I must be about my father's business. Is that right? In our text, Mark said, while Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard, very precious, and she break the box and poured it on Jesus' head. Is that right? Amen. This woman had put in a whole year's work in the gift that she brought to anoint Jesus' body with. It was extracted from an east, amen, India plant. And the equivalence of uh, the purchasing power was 300 pence, uh, 300 days wage for a rural worker. Is that right? And after all of this preparation, praise the Lord, after all of this preparation, amen, amen, for Jesus burying. Yeah. Other words, I'm going to say she put some time in. As she prepared herself, amen, as amen, to meet the master. She wanted to do something good for Jesus. Is that right? Oh, yes, oh, yes, amen. She saved up her money for a whole year. I said for a whole year. You, you know, I, I'm sure she didn't have no... SunTrust bank account. Come on, y'all. She didn't have no Wells Fargo or yeah. Bank America. But each Friday when she got her little check, she went home and put it in a fruit jar. You know, amen. Or tied it up in a rag. Come on, y'all. Amen. But she saved her money for a whole year. Is that right? Amen. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere she had heard about Jesus. She had to have heard because she said, amen, when he come to town, amen, amen, if, if, when, when he have another service, another meeting in this area, I'm going to make sure I go to the meeting and give him my best. Is that right? Amen. 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 Jesus said, leave her alone because she has done what she could. Is that right? She came beforehand to anoint my body for burial. And I tell you, I understand now what Paul, when he said, Amen. No matter how good you do, it's always somebody. God say, Amen. He say, Amen. 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 Every time I attempt to do good, evil is always present. Huh? Here it is. This woman came in to anoint the body of Jesus. And there was an instigator sitting up in the room. Uh, are you helping me here? Amen. Amen. Judas was there. 
And he's sitting up in there talking about why? Why is this expensive? Ointment wasted. Come on, help me somebody here. It should have been sold. And put the money, amen, for the poor. Are y'all helping me here? And Jesus came out and said, uh, you're not concerned about the poor. Huh? As a matter of fact, say, you took the money bag. And you've been stealing. Come on, y'all. Huh? And you got to watch them folks around church always concerned about the money. Don't come to prayer meeting. <laughs> oh, sure. Don't sing in the choir. Don't work on the usher bowl. Uh oh. But they want to know where the money is. It's going. Is that right? But Jesus said, you're not concerned about taking care of the poor. You're concerned about putting the money in that little bag you told me. And you're taking what's in the bag. He said, the poor will be with you always. Which means, my brothers and sisters, the church will always have something to do. I didn't say that. Jesus said it. He said, the poor will always be with you. Is that right? And you know, some of our churches have gotten so sophisticated. You can help me if you want to. They don't want no drunk folks coming to the church. They, they, they don't want no drug addicts. Come on, help me here. Hanging around the church. Church ain't got no business with no prison ministry. Are right. uh, you going to pray me with me for a moment? But Jesus said in the 25th chapter of Matthew, amen, when I was in prison, you visit me not. When I was hungry, you fed me not. When I was naked, you didn't close me. And I do remember when we started the ministry there in First Corinth, amen, some of my elite folks, come on, y'all can help me if you want. And they made sure, and they wanted to run me away from the church. He bringing them drunks in the church. Are you helping me here? He feeding the more drunk folks. They ought to get them a job. But I heard Jesus when he said, when you've done this to me, when you've done this to them, come on, y'all. The least, amen, of my little one. And that's the one that's crawling off and under the bridge. You can help me if you want. And that's the one that's, amen, been high on cocaine all night long. Amen. Don't think that, amen, just because you, amen. Now, this is what I told them. Now, don't think because you got some right guard on now. So help me if you can. You got some perfume on now. You can help me if you want to. You are no better than them. God loved them too. He just don't love what they're doing. Can I get a witness here? And the Bible says, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. He said, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And one of the things that we did in 1 Corinth, yes, we fed them bacon and eggs. Can I get a witness here? Gave them some hot grits. Gave them some coffee. But before they got the grits, come on, y'all. Before they got the clean clothes, before they got in the housing ministry, we gave them the word. Come on, y'all. Is that right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Just as Jesus, when he was on the side of the mountain. Can I get a witness here? And he fed the 5,000. The first thing he did was he gave them the word. He told the boys, and now, amen. I done, I done fed them spiritual food. 
Now you feed them physical food. And they told Jesus, we don't have enough money in the treasure. Can I get a witness here? To be able to feed this many people. Is that right? And all we know the story how Jesus took two little fish and five barley loaves. Well, Luke gives us, amen, a similar incident. Amen, as the one of this woman. Luke, the seventh chapter, 36 through the 50th verse. Is that right? It said, why Jesus, amen, amen, was in the Pharisee's house, who desired him to come, amen, and eat dinner with him. Can I get a witness here? And he said, why he was in the city, there came, amen, a woman of that city. And this woman here was, amen, a prostitute. Can I get a witness here? Yes. Said she came in the house when she knew that Jesus was in the house. Is that right? Oh, yes. And she came in and got down at the master's feet and began to wipe his feet, wash his feet with the tears from her eyes. She began to dry his feet with the hair on her head. Is that right? The Bible said, amen, Simon, amen, the Pharisee. He said, if this man were a prophet, he should know who is down at his feet. Is that right? Oh, yes, oh, yes. And Jesus looked to Simon. He said, Simon, I need to talk to you. So you standing there reasoning with yourself. You talking about uh, who is down at my feet. So Simon, amen, when I came through your door, so you didn't offer me no water to wash my feet. Not only that, uh, but ever since I've been in your house, this woman has, oh Lord, shed tears and washing my feet. So she has not only that, but she took the hair on her head and she dried, dried my feet. Is that right? There? When I came in the door, Oh, Lord, you didn't offer me no holy kiss. Y'all ain't going to help me, so I'm going to send. But ever since I've been in this house, send. She have not ceased, oh, Lord, the kids kiss my feet. Is that right there? Now, Simon, I got a little story to tell you. So there was a, a creditor. Come on, y'all. Oh, Lord, and he had two, oh, Lord, men that owe him money. When they came, they came and had no money to pay the bill. And he frankly forgave both of them. Can you tell me one owed him 50 and one owed him 500? Is that right there? You tell me which one of them will love him the most. Simon said, I'm sure the one that owed him 500. Come on, y'all. Is that right there? He told Simon, you said it just right. Oh, Lord. So you standing up in here. Oh, Lord. You ain't done nothing to welcome me to your house. Is that right there? But this woman here, oh Lord, she had a whole lot of sins. Is that right there? And surely she gonna love me more. Is that right there? I believe somebody in the house today can say, I remember the, when I was lost in sin. How the Lord looked beyond my faults. 
and forgave me for all of my sins. Is that right? I know I'm coming down your street now. Oh, Lord, in God, all right. Somebody ought to help me say yes in here. Oh, Lord, he said, Simon, no wonder this woman is down at my feet because she was lost in sin. Now her sin has been forgiven. Is that right? You know, if the Lord doesn't save you, you are not to be just sitting here. You ought to say, I know what the man talking about because he saved me. Won't he save you, y'all? Is that right? And there was another incident, and then I'm going to my seat. Oh, Lord, the Bible said that six days before Jesus went up to Calvary, Oh, Lord, he went by, amen, Lazarus' house. Can I get a witness here where Lazarus was who had been dead? Is that right? And Lazarus was sitting on the other side of the table. Is that right? And Mary, come on, y'all. Oh, Lord, took a, a same, amen, kind of anointing. And she anointed Jesus' feet. Is that right? But Lazarus was sitting at the table who had been dead. Is that right? I'm glad to tell you, I don't know, amen, how you feel about it. But only what you do for the Lord will last. Is that right? Whatever you do for him, it got to be real. In God, all right. It's time out, amen, for just showing up to church to see what somebody else got on or to see what somebody else going to say. Is that right? You come in the church, it's got to be real. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, whatever you do for the Lord, let it be real. In God, all right. Yeah! In God, good today. Have it been good to you? Have it been good to you? Only what you do, let me tell you, it's going to last. The reason I know uh, it's going to last, because uh, one Friday evening, I'm getting ready, y'all, to go to my seat. One Friday evening, in God, all right, is real. He came down through 42 generations. He's real. Isn't it real? Say yeah. Oh, isn't it real? One Friday evening, they marched him up a hill called Cavalry. In God, all right. I heard him tell them, if you think I'm going to fight you back, go on and nail my hand. If you think I'm going to run from you, go on and nail my feet. But I tell you what you better not do. Don't raise me up. If you raise me up, I, I will draw men unto me. In the all right, they nail his hand, they nail his feet, took him down. When he died, he died. Didn't he die, y'all? In the all right, in the all right. They took him down there, put him in a bar of tomb. He stayed there Friday night. He stayed there Saturday, Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he stepped out the grave. In the all right, say yeah, say yeah. In God, all right. In God, all right. Do you know he's all right? It makes no difference what you're doing for the Lord. Only what you do for Christ will last. Say yeah. Say yeah. I know he's all right, though. Do you know he's all right? I dare 
dare you to test one more person. Say, I know what he's talking about. Yes! Yes! Hallelujah! Glory! Glory! Oh, sure. Didn't he get up, y'all? Didn't he get up? I heard him told him, if you put me in the grave, the grave can't hold me. Isn't it all right? Isn't it all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I heard Jesus say, whatever this gospel is preached, somebody got to call her name. Can I get a witness in here? It makes no difference who come in this door to Pastor Full Street, Johnny Flakes Jr. I don't believe you hear me. Johnny Flakes Jr. is right here in God, all right. Only what you do for Jesus is going to last. Say yeah. Say yeah. Jesus said, leave her alone. So wherever you preach this gospel, wherever it's preached, you got to call her name. She did what she could. Stop trying to overdo it. Just do what you can. And God will, he will reward you. You can say payday. It's coming after a while. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Till the old shipper, shippers are you? Till the old Yes! Oh, yes! Shipper! Shipper's eye! Hello! Till the old. <laughs> oh, shut. Shipper! Shipper's eye! If you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna see Jesus, get on! Yeah! Get on. Oh, yes, sir. He have landed. Oh, I know I'm right. Meaning, he have landed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Many, many found how he have land. Oh, I like that. Y'all help me. Many, many found. If you want to see, if you want to see, get on. Oh, yes. I know somebody is a little worried. I know they're a little worried. They asked him the question about the danger out there in the world. But I stopped by to tell you that it ain't, ain't no danger. 
in God, in God, wanna sit it ain't no. Oh, oh yes, sir, in God, <laughs> water. Come on, Chad. Oh, it ain't no danger. I know I'm right. In God. If you want to see Jesus, get on. The door is open. Get on. If you don't mind, I need to tell you. A young man was talking to me just the other day. He said, Pastor, I always hear you singing the old ship of Zion. I want to get on the ship, but can you tell me who's going to be driving the ship? Oh, Lordy. I told him, he said, I've heard about old man Abraham. I told him, Abraham won't be driving. He said, I even heard a story about Moses. I told him, you ain't got to worry. Moses won't be driving. Oh, Lord. He said, I heard a lot about Peter. Come on, y'all. I told him, Apostle Peter won't be driving. He said, can you tell me who going to be driving the ship on that day? I told him, can I tell you what I told him? Can I tell you what I told him? Hey, Jesus. <laughs> is the he is the captain came came to his oh, yeah Lord, 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 Lord 